Design of reinforced masonry walls for out of plane loading. So just a little road map of what we'll be doing over the next two hours. Just a short introduction, sort of the out of plane loading of masonry walls. The first part before the break, we will talk about allowable stress design. That seems to be still the most common design method. And actually for out of plane loading, it's probably a little simpler. or is a little simpler and gives about the same results as strength design. Uh, after the loading, or after the break, excuse me, we will look at strength design, where we do have to cover second order P delta effects. The third segment of the uh, webinar will be on the moment magnifier method, which is uh, useful for walls with openings, and we'll look at an example of that. So the first part here, we'll have a few minutes of an introduction, and then we'll talk about allowable stress design. So as was mentioned, I was chair of the uh, 2016 code committee from 2013 to 2016. So I'll show you the uh, two greatest accomplishments of my career, in my opinion. One is that the 2016 Masonry Code had slightly fewer pages than the 2013 edition after a long and steady upward trend. I don't know if the 2016 402 uh, Masonry Code is the only structural code to have fewer pages than the previous edition, but certainly a rare occurrence. And no, I did not reduce the font size, al although I had thought about that. The second accomplishment is that we, uh, myself and a few others, convinced the Masonry Society to go to a six-year code cycle. So the next Masonry Code will be coming out next year in 2022. Unfortunately, when I developed this plot um, a few years back, I was a little optimistic, and I think we're going to creep back up and have a little increase in pages, but not a huge increase in that. Just as uh, um, sort of an aside on where we're at in the 2022 code cycle, there's part of the consensus process to develop a code that the, you have to go out for public comment, a 45-day public comment period, and anybody can comment, um, and by our rules, we have to address all public comments. We do not necessarily have to make a change to the code, but at least we have to provide a committee-approved response to all public comments. And we are just about ready to enter the public comment period for the 2022 code. It will be available on the Masonry Society website. You can just... Um, Google that at masonrysociety.org. It should be up there in the next few days, and then there'll be uh, till about the middle of July public comment period. So you can see we'll be able to see some of the changes we're proposing for 2022 and provide any comments that you have. So I would encourage you to do that. That is good feedback for the code committee. So here is a typical wall, masonry wall. We'll deal primarily with single story structures, but it would be also applicable to uh, multi story structures. Typically, we assume our walls to be simply supported. We may have a little moment restraint, but usually not a lot there. So often we assume them to be simply supported. We have a uniform load. This could be wind load or earthquake load. We often have a concentrated moment at the top of the wall. And this is usually due to eccentric axial loads. So we have, uh, say, a roof joist or some sort of uh, part of the roof system coming in here. And usually it's a little bit eccentric from the center line of the wall. So there's a small moment up there. So we can draw a shear diagram, a moment diagram, find our point of zero shear, and then that would be the maximum moment. Almost always, though, that um, essentially the mid-height moment is an adequate approximation for the maximum moment. So you'll see code equations and examples. We'll just use what's circled here in red or outlined in red here. That WL squared, um, you're used to the moment from uniform load. M over 2M is the moment at the top. Then for simply supported at half the height, to mid height, to just be half that moment. Um, so usually we'll use that. If you do have a large moment at the top, there is this extra term that adds in. But I don't even have a good example of when this term is significant. So I did want to explain that typically this is what we use in red here for design of masonry walls, but it is an approximation 
It's usually more than 99% accurate. I'll just give you some basic information on concrete masonry walls here that we'll use in some of the examples. Here the, the top table is uh, wall weights for concrete masonry units. This is just a summary of what's in ASCE 7 for dead loads. And then the bottom table is just approximate wall weights, which are often useful for design. So for seismic loads, of course, the out-of-plane load is directly proportional to the mass or weight of the wall. Um, but we don't know the weight of the wall. We, in masonry, typically, um, we're using partial grouting, where we're only grouting the cells or cores that have a reinforcing bar in them.